Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. A few days ago we released our review of the MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio for Windows. This time it's time to do what we usually do and give it the good old Linux treatment. Let's do it. As usual, I'm going to make this easy for you guys to understand. I'm going to try and not get too technical and before we get stupid comments like Oh, you didn't even compare it to the Founders card. Clearly we don't have one. Don't you think if we had a Founders card that we would have done a video about it? Come on guys. Anyway, make sure you stick around to a little bit later in the video because I'm going to quickly chat about the whole stock situation. But let's, uh, let's get back on topic before we dive into all of that. The MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio is built on the new NVIDIA Ampere architecture and features 10 gigs of GDDR6 memory with 19 gigs of throughput. Now we've talked about all the technical specs, the power consumption, the pricing, the thermals in our initial review of this card. And you can check that out up there and make sure you watch that. And uh, yeah, we didn't miss out anything in this video. It's all in that video already. And I didn't really want to double up. Anyway, we talked about the testing hardware and all of that stuff as well. And we talked about basically everything that we're using in this video in that video as well. For the OS, we use Ubuntu 20.04.1 with the latest NVIDIA driver at the time of filming this video, along with kernel version 5.4.0-47 and the latest AMD drivers for all of the AMD testing we did and we use both the proprietary and open source drivers with the latest ACO compiler and ultimately the results as of filming this were about the same for the AMD GPUs regardless of which driver we used. We only use Ubuntu as well because it's the quickest distro for us to reroll if something breaks and the results for other distros will be relatively similar anyway. So yeah, it's just, that's just the reason why we do it. And we also use our new suite of benchmarks since our new suite is actually cross-platform. All of the benchmarks that we feature in our GPU videos are the same for both Windows and Linux now. So we do this because it gives us an opportunity like this video you're watching right now to compare Windows to Linux. And a lot of people want to see that. So that's why we do it. We also retested every single GPU that we've got in hand, which is about 40 in total. And we started testing all of these GPUs the minute we launched the original review and we only finished testing this morning. That's basically why we haven't uploaded for like three or so days. And we decided to only include the GPUs that we used in that video in this video so we could compare them as well. And just to like talk about our methodology as well, because some people might get a little bit confused, but we don't include 1% highs or lows with these tests because it just introduces a whole lot of unnecessary testing. And uh, average frame rate gives you a good indication of expected performance anyway, especially if you're building a system that is configured pretty similarly to our testing hardware, which is actually not really out of the ordinary if you're going to be buying a 3080, but more on that later. Anyway, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At lower resolutions, we're seeing Shadow of the Tomb Raider outperform the Windows benchmarks by a considerable amount, which we'll, uh, we'll show shortly in our Windows vs Linux comparisons, but with this driver, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see the performance being so strong in Linux. And it's kind of showing us that Nvidia cares more about Linux now than they used to. And Nvidia has been the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So Nvidia, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Woo. All right. Thank you some friends there. At 1440p, the same thing is being echoed here. The performance is quite strong and at 4K, it then begins to even out again. Again, the 3080 really shines at 4K, even in Linux. Now, if we look at these comparisons between Windows and Linux, we're seeing that the Vulkan version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider in fact pulls ahead of Windows at lower resolutions, but then everything again begins to equalize at 4K. This might be to do with the governor and the way the Linux kernel handles boost clocks, but we'll come back to this again when we get our hands on a 3070 because there's more to this story and it's a bit more telling when we're actually able to do the 3070 stuff. But let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For Superposition, we perform three tests in total. We use the 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and our own custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Superposition is a pretty good benchmark if you want to get a good idea of the performance of your own system as well, because it's free. So yeah, we, we use it because you can compare your own systems to ours as well. The Superposition benchmark is a bit lackluster in Linux since it uses OpenGL and not Vulkan, but it does give you an indication of OpenGL performance. But yeah, 
Uh, OpenGL has its own inherent limitations, which we can do a whole video about on its own, but we're not gonna talk about it here. When we start to compare the performance with Windows and Linux, we can see that the DX11 performance is a lot better than when it's in OpenGL and Linux. But to be honest, that's not something that we don't already know. So yeah, it's, it's nothing really surprising with, with this benchmark. Speaking of benchmarks, let's move on to the next one. Basemark GPU. Now Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance since the engine it's built on has been designed with the ground up with Vulkan in mind and it really takes advantage of your hardware. This benchmark is an all out Vulkan benchmark but there are a few more things here at play and it uses your hardware in a bit of a different way. And I'm a poet, I didn't even know it. Why did that rhyme? I don't know. Anyway, the 1080p results are like Windows and they're very, very impressive and this card really pulls away from the rest of the pack in terms of performance. We're seeing the same type of uplift here with 1440p with the 3080 absolutely dominating in Linux as well. And lastly in 4K, we're seeing the same thing again, but if we pivot for a second and look at the comparisons, you'll see that unlike Shadow of the Tomb Raider in Linux, Basemark's Vulkan performance falls behind Windows. This is actually a pretty important and polarizing comparison because it shows us that game engines and optimizations play a huge role in how something performs. It's basically a lesson in limiting your own expectations. Lastly, let's take a look at the Blender benchmarks. Now, this is a really compute heavy benchmark and we ran both the BMW and classroom scenes for testing. One thing that we noticed that blew us away was the fact that we couldn't compare Linux and Windows results because they are quite literally exactly the same. No word of a lie, there wasn't even a single second difference in any of the benchmarks. This is actually a credit to the Blender developers creating an, an application that is completely cross-platform and something that really doesn't care about your operating system of choice. It's purely about the hardware and I can really get behind software that's developed like that. Less about the OS, more about the hardware. Okay, that's basically all the benchmarking stuff. Now let's uh, address this whole uh, stock situation with bots and scalpers. Now this content definitely isn't gonna hold up over time, but instead of making a dedicated video about it, I thought I'd just add it into the tail end of this video. If this isn't your cup of tea or you're watching this in like a year or two years time or whatever, feel free to switch off now. But for those who are interested in hearing my thoughts, uh, yeah, here we go. All right, you ready? Strap yourself in. First off, people complained and said really stupid things like, oh, you shouldn't do videos about these cars because no one's gonna be able to buy them. Here's the thing. When we work on these videos pre-launch and do all the testing and give you the results, there's no way of us knowing what's gonna happen with any type of availability of the product once it officially launches. We get sent the products, we're told a launch date, we sign a bit of paper telling us to shut our mouths about the performance, and that's it. There is uh, no YouTuber conspiracy theory about board partners making boards just for YouTubers and no actual stock. Take off the tinfoil hats and chill out. That's just not how it is for us. Secondly, the use of bots and scalpers. This stuff happens all the time, but on this occasion, this is on a way larger scale. I absolutely hate those putrid humans that exist that take advantage and take something away from people who have been hanging out and saving up for all their money for an upgrade for the last few years, because I know a few people personally who've been saving their money for this generation, and it's absolutely disgusting. It's the kind of people who who buy sneakers to resell them that have started infiltrating the tech community. I'm not gatekeeping the tech community. Everyone here is welcome. All I'm saying is stop it. It's selfish. We don't need this in the tech community. Guys, there's enough for everyone over time. Just chill out. Lastly, in terms of actual stock levels and people complaining about it, I think a lot of people have forgotten there's a global pandemic going on. And now you're only just realizing that it's impacting the manufacturing, fabrication, and availability of something you're excited about. I get it, you're angry. Don't attack us. It's our bread and butter. We make videos about this stuff so you can make informed purchasing decisions. Uh, th that could be now or in the future, whenever you can buy the cards. Again, we have no idea about stock availability at the launch time of products. It's just, we, d we don't know this stuff. And to be fair to you guys, uh, you guys have been really kind to us about all this stuff. Uh, there wasn't a single comment talking about us getting cards or complaining about it, but I have seen a stack of other YouTubers getting attacked for it and that's not on guys, just calm down, right? 
I've got nothing to do with it, and I'm I'm really tired of seeing this angry mob mentality attacking something or forming an opinion without having all the facts. And there was low stock to begin with, I get it, but most likely there was enough to allocate to distributors for the initial launch, but because of the global pandemic most people have forgotten about, that's what happened, and that's no surprise to me. What surprises me is the selfish assholes who created bots to buy up all the stocks to resell. It's disgusting and those people should be really ashamed of what they did. And yeah, that's the meat and potatoes of what I have to say. Everyone, I'm sorry that you can't get cards. I do feel for you. And I'm not trying to say that I'm better than you or that we're better than you because we have the cards because that's not what's going on here. And it is unfortunate, but at the end of the day, there's nothing that we can do about it personally. We just have to wait. And that's it. Anyway, what do you reckon, Claire? Yeah. Does that... Uh, Why are you asking me? I don't know. I was just asking. I, I thought no one cared about what you had to say. Fair enough. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if you guys like this video, you're going to have to do like and subscribe. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice and tell us what you hated about it. Basically do what you usually do in comment sections. And once again, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. Be sick. And guys, I know it's a little bit frustrating that you can't get your hands on these cards, but please be kind to the YouTubers who are only doing what they have to do to get by. At the end of the day, guys, we get sent these cards because that's what Nvidia and the manufacturers want us to have. We don't have control over stock or anything like that. That's just not how it works. We know as much as you guys know about all this stock and all this stuff going on right now. It's pretty disgusting that it has to happen. I do feel for you. I have spoken to a lot of you in Discord and around social media about it, and you're very upset, and I'm upset for you. I mean, it, it, it's, yeah, it's it's bad. I, I can remember when I, when I didn't do YouTube and this kind of stuff would happen, I'd be very upset too, but I don't know if I'm saying the right thing. I don't know. I'm trying to be empathetic mm. because like at the end of the day, we've got cards. It's part of our job, but, but it sucks. Yeah, it sucks that you guys can't get them. It really does. And yeah, I'm sorry that I can't do anything to fix it. If I had like a hundred cards or whatever, and like this whole thing is going on, I'd just give them out. I'd be like, whatever, I'll just have them like, Christmas. yeah, Christmas for everyone. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys understand our point of view. It's, it's hard for us because we're like this group of people who like, not, not, hasn't happened to us personally, but I have seen it happen to other YouTubers, but this group of people who are privy to like all the latest tech before it comes out. And it's hard for us because like, we have to deal with the backlash all the time. It's like, like we can, sometimes we're like, everyone's punching back with this kind of stuff. And yeah, uh, we're humans too. Don't forget that guys, we're humans too and we have feelings. So yeah, thanks for watching.